Valentine's Day, North American Black History Month, and a challenge that many of us may struggle with every year, are some of the many things that can be associated with the month of February, without mention of the big one. February being the shortest month of the year, holding 28 days instead of the typical 30 or 31. But, once every 4 years we get to spend just one more day in this godforsaken month, pushing you already 28 days to 29, and then the next 3 years are back down to 28, and it has been like this since the Romans. But what if there was 30 days in February? Well that would be impossible because the calendars have been created that way to ensure it's as accurate as possible. Or were they? In fact, February did have 30 days in its month, just once, and when that big 30-2 changed into a 1-3, it was never seen again. Sounds intriguing, right? So what must have happened to make this impossible date somehow possible? Who is responsible for such an oddity and why did they do it? The country responsible for the 30th of February comes from Sweden, all the way back in 1712. As to the what and why questions, you'll need the context to help understand what and why. After all, context is the lubricant that eases the pleasure of understanding why things happen. But the quick answer to that is the transitioning of calendars. Yes, you heard me right, the transitioning of calendars. For the lesser informed part of my audience, that calendar you have in your room with your favourite Japanese cartoon character on it is a little thing called the Gregorian calendar. But the calendar that came before that was the Julian calendar. Now these aren't the only two calendars ever used, there has been countless various calendars used in the past, and a few are still in use today, on a much smaller and specific scale. But we don't give a shit about those when all we need to know right here are these two. The Julian calendar, being the predecessor to the Gregorian calendar, was named after the one and only Julius Caesar. It was first used in the Roman Republic from 46 BC, and is still used today, mainly in Orthodox Christianity. The beginning decline of the Julian calendar was in 1582, when the calendar reform happened, done by the then current Pope of the time, Pope Gregory XIII, who signed a decree to indicate that times were changing, figuratively and literally, replacing the also then current Julian calendar to the more accurate Gregorian calendar, named after yours truly. The calendar reform was made to fix the inaccuracies caused by the Julian calendar, which was becoming more inaccurate by the centuries, because it allocated an extra day to February once every four years, forever. While that may sound like a whole load of nothing, it was a problem, as this technically made the Julian calendar longer than an actual solar year, because leap days existed where they shouldn't have. Over time this led to the spring equinox coming earlier than it should be, which is pulling Easter along by its throat since Easter Sunday gets calculated from the first full moon after the spring equinox, hence why Easter is always on different dates. The longer the Julian calendar was used, the worse the calendar drift had got, putting everything out of whack and led to a gradual increase of calls over the centuries to reform the calendar when the drift was getting bigger. There was an initial attempt to reform the calendar before Pope Gregory, by Pope Sixtus IV in 1476, but the guy Sixtus got to help reform the calendar had a 2 o'clock appointment with St. Peter a few months after getting to Rome, and since dead people were only good for fertiliser, it was PG-13's turn to get the job done. And after a long process of reforming the calendar, this brand new reformed calendar was looking the exact same as before. Except there was an additional rule to leap years. In terms of centurial turnovers, if the new century year was divisible by both 100 and 400, then they get to stay as leap years, while the rest lost their leap year privileges. The new calendar was also meant to skip 10 days when implemented to be able to bring back the accuracy of the dates caused by the Julian calendar drift, which would increase by one day every 128 years. So in 1582, the Gregorian calendar had been unleashed to Europe, and the new calendar wasn't instantly switched over across the continent because of the whole three-way religious showdown they had between Catholics, Protestants and Orthodox Christians. Catholics changed first, while Protestant and Orthodox nations didn't, but since the Gregorian calendar is the international civil calendar for most of the world, you can see which Christian denominations finally caved in. Over the years, the gradual increase and popularity of the Gregorian calendar reached Protestant states and nations, and now it's time to draw attention to the north of Europe, Sweden. Sweden was a Protestant country and had chosen to stick with the Julian calendar after the Gregorian calendar was created up until November in 1699, when the country finally chose to change calendars, but they didn't want to skip the days instantly. They wanted to have a gradual shift into the Gregorian calendar by creating the Swedish calendar, which would skip all upcoming leap years from 1700 to 1740, that way they would then use the Gregorian calendar. Well that just sounds like skipping the days with extra steps. But that's just what they wanted to do, and all forms of transitions must start somewhere, and theirs started in 1700, with the leap day that year being the first of many to be removed, which would continue up until 1740. Simple. Oh yeah, 
I forgot to mention the Great Northern War. That was a thing. And started in the same year, just one week before the leap day is skipped. Ooh, talk about poor timing. Only the leap day in 1700 would be skipped, so for now the whole skip leap day process would get postponed indefinitely because of their neighbours. Until January of 1711, when the King of Sweden just gave up with the casual transition to the Gregorian calendar to change back to the Julian calendar, because it may be a surprise to hear they had bigger things to worry about. But if they were going to revert back then they'd have to add an extra day back to the calendar to be in line with the Julian calendar again. And would you believe it, the following year was a leap year. So since one day gets added, why not just add two to this year instead? So that's what they did. In 1712, when the 29th of February had passed, Swedes in their dying Sormakt Steden woke up to find themselves in the first and only ever time the 30th of February was an actual date. And after that day, the 30th of February has never been seen officially on calendars ever since. And Sweden stuck with the Julian calendar from this time to 1753, when they changed to the Gregorian calendar by just skipping the 11 days needed instead of dragging it out again like last time. Could the 30th of February arise again in the future? I don't know, but if it does, then a second reform has hit the calendar. But until then, this has been a certified History in MS Paint production, and I hope you have enjoyed, and thanks for watching.